Okay, I will try to like break the record for the shortest presentation of the week. Um, but we, I think it was, we think that it's important to also give you an idea of other type of information that you can add on top of your on top of your health facility and community and stock and population. And there are also other other data that are very much linked with the with the facilities. And um, and we have started working together with the, the Global Fund and the WHO on these quite a while ago, uh, but it's something that it's a, it's a very extensive type of work and uh, and it has a lot of information. So it has been a long process of try to reduce to the to the minimum the, the core type of indications that you want to to collect for evaluating your facilities. So what and instead of like calling it, uh, it's based very much on the a harmonized health facility. Oh, the A stands for assessment. Thank you. <laughs> it's because we were calling it now health facility attributes. And what are these attributes? Um, if you are acquainted with uh, the way that uh, DHIS uh, works, attributes are normally um, type of informations that are not very variable for the person. So for example, the name of the person is an attribute. The date of birth of a person is an attribute. So we are calling it a facility attributes because per se, these kind of, um, these kind of, of, of but in the end they are data elements, but they are variables nonetheless, are not changing for the facility itself. What you are trying to evaluate for that facility remains for that facility. So, um, and also why they are semi-permanent and not exactly the normal way that we do attributes, because you can decide a little bit also the frequency of collection. This is supposed to be a self-administered uh, way of evaluating um, the the readiness and accessibility of the of the services and the equipment and all that comes with it, and uh, you can have it, for example, every six months. You can have it once a year, every quarter. It's very much dependent on the type of uh, of ruling and the type of of uh, implementations that you have uh, locally. Um, what can you achieve out of that? You can uh, have, for example, an overview of the uh, availability and whether you're providing different type of, uh, of um, uh, healthcare services. The equipment that you have available for those health services. So for example, you have malaria as a health service and you can start entering data on whether you have like a, uh, readily available um, laboratory services for malaria or, for example, um, uh, quick tests for malaria. If you are available, for example, uh, maternal care for malaria or if you only have uh, a quick outpatient and there is no ability to take inpatients for, for malaria, for example. You have um, a little bit an overview of the staff that you have at facility level. Um, so for example, the number of, of doctors that you might have, the number of specialists that you might have, the number of nurses, et cetera. You can have an overview of the infrastructure. So comes from uh, uh, either if you have connectivity, if you have electricity, uh, as well as uh, wash information. Therefore, if you have like access to uh, clean water, if you have access to uh, toilets or latrines or whatever comes with it. And of course, um, the preparedness uh, of uh, your, health, your health system in case of emergency. As I said, it is very much based on the HHFA. And that gives you really like the full picture of uh, all the assessment that is needed for evaluating the health facilities. This is a subset. So what it means is what? Um, it can be linked in case the HHFA is already uptaken routinely. It can be linked to it. So at least the core information that you are using to evaluate your accessibility and your readiness 
of the facilities, you can still link it and still maintain that type of information linked to the facility. So do you remember yesterday that we were also having an overview of what you can do at facility level, that you can map it out, you can see the catchment areas, you can see the population distribution, you can see like sex disaggregation and things like that. You could also start having this kind of information at facility level in order to see uh, have a, a clear overview of what you can offer and what is the status of, of that facility per se. I'm too tall for this. So, as we said it, the, um, the main modules that are part of these are based on the, on the HRAMs and HHFA, of course. So you have service availability, service readiness and the government and management, which are like the three main core way of evaluating your facilities. Then within those three uh, main modules, let's call it, you talk about staff, you talk about service provision, and then what I was saying earlier, infrastructure, power, um, IPC, that is a um, um, prevention controller and hygiene in general. So like all your wash activities. And then you have also government and management. So a little bit on the idea of whether you have like a, a government body within your, your facility, if there is any kind of management structure in your facility, going also like, for example, if you have a bank account for your facility. And this is all very flexible in the sense like we digitize the questionnaire that it can be for self-reporting, but you can add and remove this kind of information depending on what kind of, uh, of I mean, resources you might have, but also what kind of information you can extrapolate at, uh, at facility level at the end of the day. So um, how to adopt it? It's, uh, it's, I mean, in the end, it's not that different from uh, other other modules in uh, to be fair so you need to of course review what you have at facility level what kind of services because of course what is being put out uh, from our side it's a, a general thing so you might not have uh, malaria services you might not have family planning you might not have HIV services it's very much dependent on what you have locally so you need to start reviewing the questionnaire and uh, and adapt it which means uh, reducing or expanding depending on the con you might determine the frequency when you, when, that you want to use for this kind of evaluation. It can be, as I said, quarterly, six monthly, once a year, once every five years. It's very much dependent on you and what the, the management team wants to do with it. Um, you need to check the level of data collection. And, uh, and of course, that is also very dependent on whether the health, the health facility has internet or not. Um, you need to start using a little bit and start deciding what is your baseline of uh, source of information. Uh, so maybe is the WHO standardized way of collecting data or you're just going directly with the DHIS side of things and uh, or you can use the uh, WHO way of doing and then importing some of those uh, answers in the DHS models, and then you start collecting the data. And you need to make sure that this data is available across the, all the different programs, because of course it's a self-administered questionnaire. So you need to make sure that all the, re the, the relevant sources will have access to this type of questionnaire. And of course, the big part of this is actually training, because especially when you don't have an integrated system where you can retrieve all this information easily, Getting information on wash, on on uh, services, on uh, on um, staff, on uh, budget, and things like that, it can be very time consuming. You can imagine. So also uh, having a, a good system behind it and train the the people who will have to do this type of collection, it's super important. And we said it is very um, is very flexible. It's very adaptable to the different uh, to the different uh, um, context, of course. There is a dashboard that uh, is uh, available, like all the, the toolkits that we put out. And there are plenty of implementation guides that either comes with the HHFA or the HRAMS, and of course, also with the module itself. So um, how do they all relate together? I mean, uh, in the end, the whole point of all this type of, uh, of uh, evaluations is to capture a little bit the key information. Um, 
to have it a little bit more frequently because chances are most of the times that these type of uh, of facility assessments are done it's either because you have received big uh, uh, investments from donors or they are really done on routine but we have seen examples that is not necessarily true we have we were talking with our colleagues from tunisia and they have been doing great at uh, really maintaining a routine assessment up to date based on goals and where they really go back and check that everything has been done so well done to you and this is just another resource that can be added on top of it and uh, what is the added value of having all of these because of course uh it's very easy to say okay this is just an extra level of data and it's incredibly painful to do it is true but so you can better plan for resource allocation why because on top of your facility information for services you have your logistics you have everything and then on top of these you start adding the key information on the readiness and the availability of your services. You can start identifying the bottlenecks where these um, resource allocation and where these services are finding a gap, and therefore you can start acting upon it. And then you can start preparing, responding to emergencies. Why? Because you have identified where probably your bottlenecks are intervening and where they are playing a role into the access to those services and because you have like learned how these facility are profiling and you can check afterwards what you can improve out of that facility be it on resources be it on staff be it on on service provision and you can start therefore evaluate already in case of emergency what would be the best approach and what for example what are the key facilities that can respond to certain emergencies then here you have like a, quite a few examples some are taken from a from this module, some are taken also from the, for example, the rehab module and another one that will come out soon about uh, sensory functions so vision, hearing and such, which can be of interest because it all falls into the NCD side of things. And you see there are mappings you can like uh, have like the profile of the of the health um of the workforce in health you can uh, start having it either in graphs or in maps to see the density per, per population and for example you can also see like the number of specialists how many beds you have how many ipd uh like actual bed you have against uh, what how many you are supposed to have because we all know that sometimes the actual beds are normally more than the beds that you are supposed to have so it can also be the fact that you might want to start plotting how this is going and of course you can also start checking for example caseload per staff because you start triangulating also the kind of information from the service together with how many how many um stuff you have out of that so you might have i don't know this in this case was eye care because we are taking the the um, graph from another another um, toolkit but it could be also i don't know you're you have like two surgeons but you are having 200 surgeries so you can start evaluating whether the case load per surgeon is actually maybe a bit too much or is not enough and therefore we need to start taking maybe like more people in and we can become like, I don't know, a more re referential way uh, of accepting patients. So overall, like uh, the whole point here is the fact that yes, there are like extra information that can be added on top of things in uh, in the profile of the, of the facilities, but this can be an added value and not just uh, a more painful way of collecting extra information because once you start triangulating all this information together with your facility data and your health data you can start checking really where the gaps are in your facility and when you need to start investing and also start checking whether the investments that have already happened are actually having an effect in the availability and the accessibility and and the and the readiness of the of the services that you are providing so that was really like very short also because it's something that we are still developing and working on and uh, ready to pilot pretty soon and uh, and yeah, so we just wanted to share with you because it's incredibly important in an integrated system. And I don't know if Anne, you have like a, any additional comment towards that. Yes, you that Anne, yeah. <laughs> 
So just an addition of some of the background um, for this work. Um, I think it came from two key areas. Number one was some of the initiative for the form countries, and it's a lot linked to the, maybe some of the country here have done it, which is called the uh, result-based financing, where they actually have to report the progress where to the donors, and then from there, they will be able to get funding for the services. And, and with that, it's also including the funding for a, a lot of it is the um, the readiness of the service, to making sure that we have enough equipment and, and essential medicines and commodities. Um, so this has been implemented in several countries through the DHIS2 network as part of number one, readiness um, and, and, and for, the, for the country. Number two is also to showcase of the HMIS, the health management information for the planning. Number three, it is also helped to improve the quality of the services. And then with COVID and WHO also um, pre um, sort of presenting or introducing this toolkit called the Pulse Survey, where every quarter we send a questionnaire to, to countries to try to see you know, what are the, the missing elements to maintain essential health services of primary health care level and other health uh, facilities. So this put together and we and we're trying to see how we can best to bring this as part of the health management information system and as part of the integrated cross-cutting health service where we combine the volume of patients, where they are from, what service they want versus what the facility are supposed to provide and if they are ready to provide the service in terms of infrastructure, in terms of commodity and, and logistics, in terms of human resource, in terms of you know, the time and also just a cross triangulation of the data. So we're also trying to bring it in as a, a either quarterly or by annual and combine that with the supportive supervisions. And the key important thing here is that the, this should be done as a part of the coordinated efforts across all different programs or different components of the, of the, of the health services. So for example, if you have a family planning and maternal and child health supportive supervision, you should go and look at that. But, and then, you know, malaria or TB or HIV have a similar, they can go and look at that. So they have a one standard templates that everybody can look at and then make sure that the health facility managers are aware of what they have and then maintain the services. So, and this is also developed based on the, I think here many will be familiar to the harem, but then also the harem, sorry. And then also we have what we call the health facility, um, the health, the harmonized health facility assessment, where it's evolved and it's extended from the former SARA survey, uh, which we also trying to encourage country to do it once in a while for the assessment of the readiness and um, availability of service in the country. And that should form as a, a baseline for the monitoring of this um, health facility attributes. So if you have a further questions, you know, uh, Victoria and I are happy to, um, to respond. Thanks.